Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to Giga Carry on Rammus consistently. You have to play for Rammus' strengths, which is a three camp clear for level three into ganks. His level four is useless. Honestly, his level six is extremely underwhelming as well. So make sure you get level three as fast as possible. The best way to do this is to focus on your red side jungle. This will also keep you healthier. You're gonna solo start and wrap, so the enemies don't know where you start. Then you're gonna red, then Krugs, you'll be level three, and then you can start Giga ganking. That's the plan. You want Aftershock, Fawn of Life, Conditioning, Unflinching, and with this Giga Carry build, you're going to want Ignite with Nimbus Cloak. That way, whenever you Ignite or use your Smite, you get a huge speed up. You won't even notice that you don't have Flash. You're going to auto attack immediately into W. Make sure you auto first because it takes them a second to react and start their auto animation on you. If you do this properly, they should all just die. It's really that simple. You're going to want your E next. gives you a bunch of attack speed, and your W extends it. So your, your E only lasts for 1.2 seconds. It gives you 20% attack speed level one. But whenever you're on your W or your Q, it extends its duration, which is awesome. That's what we want. So we're gonna wait to use it here. E auto attack W. We'll go straight into our Krugs from here. Looks like our bot lane's dying already. The biggest thing you have to worry about with Ramus jungle are mage style junglers like fiddlesticks. They can cancel your Q instantly. If the enemy team has lots of champions like that, I would recommend not picking Ramus because if you can't consistently use your Q as a speed up, then you can't really engage or gank or anything like that. So another thing you have to worry about are juggernaut top laners like Darius and Mordekaiser, they can be really annoying once they are level six. There's not much you can do against them unless you have a ridiculous item lead. We're level three, top lane's level two. That's the whole point of this clear. We're gonna Q come up from behind. We're gonna push him into our teammate, auto attack then E. E has more range than your auto attacks. And it's that easy. At this point, I'm not gonna help him push. I think he, eh, I could help him push, but I think I could also come back and gank again since he'll have more than half health by that time. We could look to kill Nocturne on his blue buff here should be on blue i guess he's not on blue maybe he went into my jungle we got our word down there at least so we'll know there's a chance he just started in my jungle the fact he's like not here yet we're gonna turn off our w so we can move at full speed then we'll go wreck this nocturne he has no abilities and i have smite and ignite He's tanking blue buffs, so I'm gonna keep letting him do that. Oh, he got it, that sucks. I, I messed up my smite pretty bad there, not gonna lie. There's no way he can solo me. I might as well just cross through. I'll act like I'm leaving. I'm not actually going to though. I really goofed on that. If I would have smited that properly, because I had him tanking the blue buff, I just kind of goofed. Oh man, well played by Vex there. I gotta get out of here. Mordekaiser's rotating. We can still get bot side scuttle and then get our blue gromp. We're only one camp behind Nocturne and we have a gank over him. So still pretty happy with where we're at. We're not really falling behind even though that interaction went absolutely poorly. The reason why we wanted to fight is he once again blew all of his abilities. He was tanking the blue buff and I have ignite advantage. So just made a lot of sense. Vex is kind of pushed up. We could definitely look for this, or we could take Nocturne's Raptors. Vex doesn't have Flash. She can fear me right out of my Q, which is really cancerous. If I play it right, I should be able to still get to her. Nice job. Well played by the Kiana. I'll help her shove this, plus I want to leech the XP. I'm going to let her have all of it, though. She could reset here. She, she really should have just resetted. This is a bait. Okay, never mind. Nocturne's not coming for it. His, his raptors aren't up either yet. That's a little surprising. I'm going to take the blast gun. I think it comes up 515. Pretty sure it's 515 or maybe it's 525. Yeah, it's like 525 then. Dang, man. All right. First back, usually looking to just get Bomby Cinder. We'll also get Oracles and Control Ward. We'll head straight for Blue Gromp. We can do them. You can do Blue Gromp easily, same time once you are level three or higher on Ramus. Mundo going in for the all in against Mordekaiser. Looks like he is going to lose it, unfortunately. His lane's going to be unplayable for him after that. Kiana just died as well. I'll leave my Control Ward right here. Nocturne's going to be very aggressive with me, having mid prio, top prio this game. Basically, I bought Prio 2. 
Most likely gonna go for his raptors or dragon. I mean, he might blind invade me here. I think the odds of that are kind of low. Auto attack Q. Q is a great auto attack resetter. I'm gonna flick on our E since our W's back up. We'll path into our red buff. We have nothing to gank bot side. We could go mid here. Yeah, actually, we'll go mid. Vex is full HP. She's not likely to back. So, this should work. If something weird happens. Even with her level advantage, we should definitely... Oh, wait. Nocturne's randomly here. That's really weird. Got the taunt into W. Kiana's gonna get here first. I dodged the fear. I should be able to get to him. Got the knockup. My taunt was almost up for her again. Well played by Kiana. That was very random positioning by Nocturne. Oh, come on. Give me the Q. Scuttle's about to come up. Can't really gank more now that he's level 6. It's just, like, way too risky. If he R's me, i just put me in such a bad spot. I obviously won't be able to solo him, and he has some kill potential over me. You'll usually be hitting level 6 on ramps anywhere from 7 minute 30 to 8 minute 30. Our level 6 is going to be a little bit delayed this game. Uh, Lux needs to pinch here. Oh, Jin's here too. Both their bot laners are. That sucks. At least Heimer's getting a plate out of it. I'll get Wolves and a Raps and a Red buff. Even though level 6 isn't crazy good on Rammus, it's still... Like, I'd rather be level 6 than level 5. These Wolves are still level 1, so they're not giving that much XP. I wanted to leech some XP from Kiana, that's why I queued kind of early there. I didn't even get to land it on the Raptors. I only got one minion leech. Well, two minion, three minions leeched from her there. Two or three. Mord's kind of low. I think I could actually do something there. I'll grab red buff real quick. Ramus, you're looking to uh, end your games, honestly, as soon as possible. His late game scaling isn't as good as... Honestly, even a Trundle or Nunu. Nunu's usually more useful late game than a Ramus or a Sejuani or a Zac is. Ramus is more focused around level 3 ganks than anything else. His raw late game scaling is too situational depending on if the enemies can consistently cancel your Q or not. Or if they're AD heavy, which they have a decent mix of AD and AP with the Mord, Vex, and Blitz. Like they have a lot of magic damage. He's low. I have Ignite. Should be able to solo him. Auto attack EW. I'm not going to bother to ignite. Have, I don't even know if I've used my ignite this game. I just haven't really had an opportunity to use it where it would have gotten a kill or gotten me away off the Nimbus Cloak speed up. So I just haven't really used it. There also hasn't really been a situation to where if I had flash, I would have gotten a kill. So I guess it is what it is. We can R at point blank range if we need to. Auto attack E. I actually went ahead and ignited her there. Your R does extend your Q's duration. And, uh, oh, what the heck? And on top of that, your, uh, if you're on your Q, it turns your R into a knockup rather than just a slow. So that gave us some extra range that we needed there. They could easily take Dragon. I want to grab Gromp, get all my HP back, and maybe fight for Scuttle. I didn't see their HP. So we do have mid prio. Wow, they're actually doing Dragon when they don't have mid prio. That's so ballsy. I just killed their mid laner. Feels like a huge throw. They're fighting in dragon area. Nocturne doesn't have R. I'm gonna go for Jin. Auto attack E W. Down he goes. Oh man, I think Nocturne got that scuttle. Auto attack blue smite got my taunt down. Lux needs to keep running. Red smite slows on the Vex. I can't really keep up with this chick. Got our Q knock up on her. Ooh, that shield is so OP, man. I can see why Vex win rate is what it is right now. Holy crap. Not only did she fear me off super quickly, she got a shield out of it because that last auto attack would have killed her, the damage and the red buff burn. It is what it is, though. Vex, one of the most broken champs in the game. What's making her distinctly OP is the fact that her fear operates unlike any fear in League of Legends, whether it be Shaco, Nocturne, or Fiddlesticks. No fear in League of Legends other than her magical fear knocks people out of their jumps or dashes. Like, if you're a Triss jump, Kha'Zix jump, 
uh, who else has jumps? I guess even a Nocturne R or a Rengar jump. Vex can literally knock them out of the air with her fear move. It's so annoying. That it's as if it's a displacement, like an Alstar knockup, except it's way easier for her to land because she has a circle move and it comes out like frame one. Like Vladimir Q damage output is insane. League needs to try to be more consistent with their physics. Where is he? Oh, he's bought. Shoot. It's pretty low. I'm going to have to R to get to this guy. I still have my taunt. I taunted him, try to hold him still for the Lux abilities. I'm not going to be able to kill him. I don't have the items either. I need to reset. Lux is going to kill herself. This is warded. Blitz is waiting to land a hook. I don't, I can't do dragon because I'm too low on HP. Yeah, he's, he's like out of mana. Lux is going to kill him with like a single E. Yep. <laughs> he was just being a turd and didn't want me to get assist. We got the wave. It's a nice juicy XP and gold for our time. I'll go ahead and reset right here. I'd probably juke a few Jin R's if this is warded and then I can W one of them if I need to. First item rush, Kemp Tank always. Second item rush, 9 out of 10 times plated. Other times, Merc Treads. Against their team, they have multi fears. I think play still caps could still be worth it. It's just in this case, they are triple magic damage, Blitz Crank, Vex, Mord. And I doubt Jin and Nocturne are going to be focusing me in fights to where I think I'd rather have the Merc Treads for the Vex Fear Blitz Silence. Jin snare. Plus, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to be going Thornmel. Thornmel is almost always the, your best option in terms of... Uh, yeah, look, look at this guy. He's getting chunked. Auto attack, key reset. He's a goner. I love having Ignite on Rammus. He just blew up. We're both one full item. It's like we're tied items, except he has lethal tempo. Lethal tempo is infinitely better than Aftershock for full HP, one versus ones to the death. Oh, we're not going to be able to do that. I don't have... Okay, she's dead. We might actually be able to do this then, but I don't have Smite. It's making me a little nervous. Auto attack Q, auto attack EW. Trying to move in between autos to stack up my chem tank faster. I'm taking this really slow. Nocturnes might actually run into us. I might have to R over this wall because Rambus just takes things ridiculously slow. I still have my R. I pop over the wall, great escape tool. I don't know where Jane Blitzcrank are. Okay, they're not rotating into me. Nocturne's gonna be really butt hurt since I took that. I have a word right here. My bot lane's gonna see him. He walks into the Lux snare. Bada boom, he's out of here. We're gonna go ahead and smite Gromp, get all of our HP back. I need to get over there ASAP. Lux is out of position. Auto attack E into my W. Down goes Jin. Even though I don't have Smite, I feel like Dragon's an okay option here. They don't have any way to steal other than Vexar, and I should be able to block that. And I don't even know if Vexar does damage to monsters or minions, because I'm pretty sure it only hits champs like Ashar. Guess we'll find out. Your chem tank, oftentimes you'll Q, then use your chem tank on Rammus. If you're already on top of people, it's usually best not to use your chem tank immediately because the active doesn't actually do damage. It's just a speed up for yourself and a slow against them. So if you're already in combat range, you usually don't use it. You usually use it as a backup. Vex flashy giga panic there. That was huge that we got that. Mort's half health. We don't want to gank that. We need to focus on Dragon Soul and then we win the game. Nocturne will never be able to solo, solo us because we have Ignite advantage, even though he has lethal tempo advantage for one versus ones. Mord will always be able to solo us just because the way his kit works. He's got really annoying one versus one stats, and I think he's got some max health damage. Uh, Jin won't ever be able to solo us, neither will Blitz. So it's really just the Mord I kind of got to stay away from now that he's sixing up. If Mundo can get him a little bit lower, I'll time myself going mid with Kiana here. All right, Vex is leaving. Never mind. You know, Mord's not a full item. We might be able to do this only because I'm full item. So is Mundo. If he R's me, I still have my R to get away inside of his R. 
Blue Smite EW. Oh, yeah, that wasn't worth. That's exactly what I was worried about. I think Mundo could turn it possibly. He's certainly not walking away from that. That was incredible. So incredible the amount of damage that a partial item Mordekaiser can do to a double magic resist Ramus. I'm sitting on 50 magic resist. It's just oh, so yucky. Let that be a lesson to you all. No matter how far behind something like a Mordekaiser is, absolutely don't even think about ganking him. Don't even imagine it. Or or the me and the riot devs are gonna put you in a relearning camp. That's what's gonna happen to you. We need to reteach you. And then we'll take full control of your social media accounts to let everyone know you're okay and that you're not in an internment camp. Because that's how we roll. <laughs> that's how you gotta roll when you play Ramus. I, I do really think Ramus could use some buffs. He's still an awesome jungler, tank jungler for beginners and for carrying like low mid elo. He could definitely use some buffs though. His damage output on his R needs to be cranked up. Since it's a skill shot, it's easy to dodge. If they have flash or a blink in their kit, it's super easy to dodge his R. I'm gonna ignite this Blitz crank. There you go, Blitz. I'm gonna auto attack Q him. And he's slowed inside of my R too. Q is a great auto resetter. Your Q knocks them up and slows, your R slows, so he was caught in a double slow there. Let's crank such a hero trying to block me off. I have blue smite true damage, ignite true damage, he <laughs> melted. Still in a really good spot after I inted on that Mord play. We've taken so much control of uh, the bot lane. Since Nocturne's dead, it's fine to take his camps. You don't normally just raw invade like this. You only do it if you know for a fact the enemy jungler's not there. Because uh, Ramus is, like, once he's in and his Q's on a cooldown, he can't really get away. Oh, yucky. Nocturne's coming. It's really hard to blind approach Bush with high minute, though. It's super dangerous. I'm going to chem tank for this blue smite. Got him. Q into chem tank, baby. He's going to lose his red buff again. And she's trying to run. Sorry, Vex. She's going to fear me here in a second. It's going to be so stupid. Oh, that's exactly what I was worried about. So lame. It's so lame how she can cast that and still keep walking at the same time. She doesn't even have to slow down. She just like farts in your face. Disgusting. Disgusting. They really, tr they really forced Vex into being like when you think about what her kit is, it's a terrible kit. There's, there's nothing about her kit that's actually good. It, oh. Like Lux actually just did that. That is incredible. So think about Vex's kit for a second. Compare it to a similar style mage. I think the best example is a Vel'Koz because they're both medium long range and their abilities do similar things, but Vel'Koz abilities do more. For example, Vex Q, just damage. Vel'Koz Q, huge multi-damage, potential true damage, and an AoE slow. Compare her E to a Vel'Koz E. Similar ability, except hers is only a slow and Vel'Koz E is a knockup. And then you're just like, what even is this champion? The only thing that legit makes her good is the fact that her fear breaks the physics of what fears are supposed to do in League of Legends. That's it. Wait for spell shield to fall off, auto attack E. If my taunt was up, I would R on her face and beat her up. Disgusting champion. I feel like that's going to be a constant reoccurring theme with new League of Legends champions is they're, they're, the devs are put in a spot where it's like, okay, we have to make this new champion, but if it's going to be considerably worse than our current champions, why would we even make it? So then they're just forced to let it arbitrarily break the physics of the game in terms of what its CC does compared to the 
identical CC from other champions to where it's what what this game is going to turn into is a lot of the new champions let's say they have a stun or snare or taunt fear or whatever it's going to operate differently from 90 percent of the other champions who have that same ability and it's going to be really frustrating for newer beginner players because they're like man i didn't know it would function like that against my champion when this other person's doesn't and it's really hard for uh for beginners or people who don't play this game very often to keep up with stuff like that Oh my god, Jin had Flash and he had uh, Gale Force. I think ultimately that's what's going to kill League of Legends. I don't think other games are what's going to kill League. I think is it's going to be the consistent inconsistencies between champions or the fact that Bucks can't proc Electrocute with a passive, an auto, and an ability when any other champion it would for the most part. It's just just massive inconsistencies that I feel like a lot of players because of these inconsistencies they don't really learn the fundamentals of what a ability or what a, a crowd a specific crowd control is supposed to do and how it's supposed to uh, uh, how it's supposed to interact with other things. There's always those interactions that uh, make or break. Fights, one versus one's team fights. Anyways, back into the gameplay. The game's starting to go down the tubes a little bit. We need to just focus on dragons. We're playing a little bit too loosey goosey. When you start playing loosey goosey, that's when you lose on Ramus. Got to stare at the mini map. Kiana's running it down. Nice Heimer pick. I'm going to come tank for this. guy's out of position uh, blitz is, I know blitz is gonna look for a hook here oh god I don't want to deal with more I can't deal with I can't deal with more is the thing he's literally gonna solo me when he's like almost dead it's insane it's it's so insane man that champion if I had Ignite, I definitely would have killed him, but wow. Even with my heal cut from Thornmelt, it's just not enough. I needed to keep my distance. No, even if, even if Mord's like 100 health, you can't kill Monoramus. It's so silly. Simply absurd. He's, uh, he gets to steal some of your stats when he's on his R. He also has self-healing. but I mean, we have heal cut. It is what it is. We may just go for Force of Nature. Instead of Dead Man's third item, that might be better here. So I'm, I'm basically just dying from magic damage. Magic damage and true damage. What we need to do is just keep playing for dragons. We'll win the game through souls. It'll get to the point where Mort can't kill Mundo efficiently. And uh, Jin's late game is very particular in terms of it doesn't do anything unless he has a huge front line and his front line honestly isn't very big it's basically a mord but mord's gonna arson on our team then he'll have no front line kiana playing up enemies trying to collapse on it let's get picked for it i i just can't do it here i'm gonna have to r away I just, I legit can't deal with Mord. It's insane. It's fine. We need to wait for the dragon fight. I hope Jin stays. I need this red buff. What we're going to do is try to play the flank. Normally you want to play frontline on Ramus, but if they have just some absurd champion like a Mordekaiser or an Alawi, you can't do that because they'll one shot you even though you're a tank. So uh, we need to hit it from behind or wait till Mordekaiser R is a teammate. Ideally, he R's M Mundo and Mundo just kites him out with cleavers and keeps running. It's harder for me to kite out Mord because if we're on our W, we move like slower than a dismounted Kled. So basically, I need to let Mundo soak the uh, Mord R. 
Mord's not in position. We might be able to take this dragon in time. We'll see. Mord's just so big. Two full item. I mean, I'm two and a half, but I'm not Mordekaiser. Kiana just got picked. I really want this dragon. Mundo's going ham. Mundo's gonna kill everything here. Got the double knockup. Got the taunt. Where's Mordekaiser? Where did he go? So Mordekaiser killed my whole team, but then didn't go to the fight. He killed like three of them. That was perfect. We got that dragon. If we get soul, that'll be probably GG's. Turrets don't do much to Ramus once you have a little bit of armor. You can walk through them. Skills so well off of armor. Try to move them between your autos. Max out your chem tank sooner. If you're looking to play a more meta, more consistent jungler who doesn't struggle against a wide variety of matchups and team comps like Ramus does, I would highly recommend Nunu right now. He's a top five jungler. He's very, very strong. And if you don't want to play Nunu, then Zach. And then Ramus and Sedge are kind of tied for that spot of awkward tank. With that being said, Sejuani does outscale Ramus. Ramus plays best against full AD team comps. When I picked him this game, it's a little forced since they have triple magic damage to where we can't just stack armor to abuse our passive and our W armor scalings. Got the taunt, got the ignite. I literally have to run away. I'm going to chem tank R. <laughs> Down goes Jin. That was perfect that more didn't R me. More just steals my stats and then kills me. Blitz is literally just holding hook. He wasn't going to throw it until I went to auto the plant. It's frustrating. It's all right, though. We got three of them. A fight went okay. As long as we just focus on not fighting, Mordekaiser will be fine. Once again, things like Mordekaiser, Darius, Olawi, they can be massive issues for Ramus. They have tools to slice through your armor and kill you as if you're not a tank. Vayne does a, Vayne does a very similar thing, too. Vayne and Master Yi can be troublesome at this point in the game. Master Yi needs a Rage Blade before he can do that. And Vayne needs a Rage Blade as well. At that point, like over half the damage they're doing to you is true damage. In, Vase's, in Vayne's case, it is max health true damage. So you're also penalized for building HP as a tank, not just armor. You're double penalized. For Master Yi, even though it's not max health damage, he's auto-attacking so fast it might as well be. Here comes Nocturne, we get the Taunt and a W. We're gonna hold on to R, try to block some of these Jin shots if we can. I can run him down here. <laughs> we got his Gale Force. Gale Force cooldown is actually pretty long. It's 90 seconds and it's really, really powerful. I don't think we should start Baron though. I think Baron would be really greedy here. If I stay near a wall, if Mord R's me, I can just R away. That's the thing about Ramus. They can't stop your R. Your R is like a Warwick R. What? Like they can't cancel it until you land. Once you're leaping, you're unstoppable. Wow, he got greedy. I don't think he wanted to use his R. I still have my R. I can influence this over the wall. It's the same time we don't want to die and blow shut down gold. We're on our W. There's no way he can kill us. Nocturne doesn't have weird max health damage or anything like that. Nice. I think I could pick up a red buff here. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful. Blitzcrank may come for me. I don't think he can kill me though. We're at 600 health. His Ignite's only gonna do 300 damage. Guess it'd be close. If 
I'm on my W though, because right now we're taking 73% reduced and 55% reduced when we're on our W. No, 86% reduced and 66. Holy crap. 86% 86 86 reduced physical is actually insane. I guess Ramus does get one of the highest highest uh, armor values with his W, which scales off armor as well. Spicy. Force of Nature, and I'll pick up our Dead Mans. If you want to get damage on Ramus, that's only options are Titanic, really, and uh, Wit's End. You don't want to go too far down the route of building damage on him, though. He has zero abilities that scale off of 80. And his AP scalings honestly are bad to where if you're building mage items on him, you're probably just going to lose. It's really that simple. Boom, got the smite. Got dragon soul. Hey, Blitzcrank. I'm going to chem tank R this guy. Vex, you already know you're getting taunted here. Jin, you gotta run, boy. Blitzcrank's not gonna do it. He doesn't have it in him. And that's it. They surrendered. I hope you guys enjoyed this Rams Jungle commentary guide on how to actually carry on him. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is King Sticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Looking at damage dealt to enemy champions, we were one of the highest in the games. It's pretty crazy how everyone on my team was about the same amount of damage. Looking at damage taken, we were one of the highest in the games at 28,000. If you look at self mitigated damage, I'd imagine it is, yeah, 51,000. That is incredible. Looking at runes, Aftershock did a whopping 1,800 damage and it mitigated 846. Fawn of Life healed our allies for 648. Conditioning was active for 63% of the game because you don't get it initially. It comes in at like the 12 minute mark, I think. It gave us 23 bonus armor, 19 bonus magic resistance. That's a decent unflinching. Seconds in combat at max tenacity granted 47 seconds. Pretty good, nearly a minute. Nimbus Cloak was activated 25 times. We honestly didn't use our ignite that much because we just didn't need to. There was a lot of ganks where we knew we were going to get the kill and didn't need it. In Celerity, it had us travel a bonus, nearly 16,000 units. All in all, Ramus Jungle is a solid low mid elo carry, iron to platinum carry. Outside of that, he does need some buffs, on, especially on his R damage. It's just pitifully low, even if you land it. And it's a skill shot. It's an R, it's a skill shot, it's low damage. That's about it.